I think indeed that me being a musician for me, it's in a way even easier to express my feelings with music. I cannot, sometimes I don't find the right, the right words for that, but it's some, sometimes in a certain mood or when I really wanna just really let out my feelings, it's easier for me to start playing some music because then it matches much better what I wanna say than when I use the words. And I think it's actually, this is indeed the musician's language, and, but it's not only the, the language for musicians, it's language for everyone, who, that, that people all around the world without speaking the same language, they understand what the music is about. And of course, this first mazurka <clears throat> from Opus 41, already this first chord is indeed so full of, yeah, it's a co combination of feelings, not only one but it goes somehow directly really from the very beginning directly to the heart because it's so expressive, it's so full of feeling. And um, yeah, it's probably indeed what was the combination of many different types of feelings, but Chopin managed to express them in one single chord. That's a kind, kind of com companion because he's always around. He's, um, I don't know, is, is that what, is he would be always traveling with me and being, being around indeed. And this is, of course, has something to do with his music because somehow and very often also playing music of other composers, I have this link in some, some, some places of, okay, this can, maybe that I can try this out in a, Scherzo or somewhere because it's, I don't know, he's somehow in the center of of the music we, we know, right? So from Bach, starting from Bach and coming also from contemporary music back. I was recently playing in Japan, I was playing some Takimitsu, Toro Takimitsu pieces. And of course it's a, uh, also very, it's a wonderful, amazing color language. And in uh, I was playing the, Rain tree sketch, uh, and there I, with, with, there is a spot with a wonderful, like crystal-like uh, reflection. It's not a, yeah, it's just a quality of the sound. And I thought, okay, uh, that that I had already an idea where I could try the similar approach in Chopin's music in a past in a certain passage. And so this is uh, somehow what, yeah, he is indeed in the, in the center. So all, every always come any, anyhow back to him, like to Rome, yes. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, for me, all music styles are really, or let's say all, the entire music is anyway connected. But the wonderful thing is indeed that it doesn't work only that the composers before Chopin uh, give me some inspiration, new ideas about his music, but also coming from our music of our days, coming back to him, it can be also, some things can be really uh, inspiring. So I, that's why I think it's so important for me to play very different type of music and not only get stuck on one particular period like romantic or classic or whatever. I think it's too how to, too arrogant to say that Chopin is my no seriously <laughs> is my friend. I don't know. I mean I have a very subjective vision of him indeed, and it's also, of course, um, doesn't have, I have a clear vision how he used, how he was as a person for me, but I have such a huge respect and admiration to him that, yeah, friend is just too much somehow. <laughs> Well, first of all, of course, sure about his music, about some some particular. But first of all, of course, the 
let's say, the general music, not not like why did you write this passage like this or something. I mean, basically, of course, I would be very interested to understand what 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 he felt when he was composing his music. What were his what was what what was his vision about it? And of course, many things about the, how he sees the our world, how he sees the musician's role in the in the in the in the world in the society um and so basically kind of yeah m more about the entire yeah the life how 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 he sees the kind of philo philosophical stuff i would never dare to be honest to ask him something also i think he also like good food and stuff like that but i would never dare somehow to talk to him about this kind of trivial stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but um, I, I just don't feel like that would be a good idea. <laughs> Basically, actually, to, to each piece of him, I always have a, 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 so many questions, but somehow going to the to the, his later period, the later the more, <laughs> because of course in the masterpieces like Polonaise Fantasy, I mean even even the question how how would he divide the proportion of Polonaise and fantasy in the piece? What is for him uh, the more relevant element, or are they equal? How to 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 really balance balance them? Is it more like really Polonaise, or it's for him more like a free, free, um, free sp speech with, of course, some somehow reminiscence moments of Polonaise of some uh, pro maybe some great things in the past, you know, or it's already foreseeing the future. Is it his last word to the world? How he saw the, 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 the so I have I have plenty of of questions, um, but also in the in the. Uh, early pieces, also like in the piano concertos. I mean, well, yes, of course, this Constantia Gladkowska, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all fine, but uh, it's somehow, what else, yes? I mean, how did he, why was he, uh, did he decide to em employ so much dancing element to his music from the very beginning? Like, why Krakowiak? Why, uh, or, or, I mean, but yeah, I think it's, on one hand, it's good that we don't know the answers on these questions, <laughs> because it gives us, the interpreters, so many, so much freedom on one hand, that every, every one of us can feel it in a very different way. But of course we have his, the only truth we have is his score, and that, that's what, we, what our fantasy should be based on. So, but that's already enough, I mean, <laughs> it's more than enough. And then all other things are just a question of your personality of your vision, musical vision. For me, first, I don't know what, uh, I mean, I can only talk about myself. For me, Mazurka is the essence of the music of Chopin because he managed to put this I call it indeed that I have a certain expression that it's like the smallest movements of the soul. He puts it in, in, in the mazurka. So it's not, sometimes it's like, you know, if we take a color, yes, we take a green. So if you see the leaf on the tree from the, from the front, it's green, right? And when, it, when the wind comes and it moves on the, on the backside, it's still green, but it's a different green. So this is what I would say, why I call it the essence, because it's so, it's so pure somehow, the, 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 the expression in, in the mazurka, that you don't have to, it just speaks for, for itself somehow. And of course, that they're also short mostly, or well, basically they are short. And uh, to, to, to find a way to combine this, uh, this expression still with this dancing element, but it's all, not always very obvious. In some mazurkas it's kind of hidden and it, or it comes out only in a few, element, a few bars or something. So it's a, I think it's just really a, the absolute masterpieces of him. Almost each one, I really admire them. That's a, I don't know, it's a, such a balm for the soul to play them, yes.
I think basically, of course, for me, the great experience was um, to play, well, to try out Chopin's musicals on period instruments. Because for me, it, it comes, this tradition comes a lot from there, also from the earlier times, like Baroque music, because the instruments were just very different. So it didn't make so much sense to play the chords, uh, you know, to play all the notes uh, together on the same time, because it didn't sound well. So I think this kind of freedom comes, traditionally takes the roots in the Baroque music. But of course Chopin was, uh, I think it's a, also, in, I, I hear very much also a vocal element there. So that um, there is a, a operatic, let's say from the opera that the singer sings in aria and the orchestra uh, takes the, uh, um, plays the accompaniment and um, the melody is just free. So you take breath, you, 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 you take time when you, when you, I don't know, it's kind of combination of everything, but I would say that I don't think that there is a rule for that, how to play it right or wrong. It's just, just a feeling, <laughs> like being in love. You are in love or you're not. So you, you play tempo rubato or you don't. <laughs> Of course, the human voice or opera of, of uh, Bellini, who Chopin really admired, apparently. So uh, it's a big source of inspiration, basically the human voice, the way singing element, because uh, how you connect the notes, it's not only about, you know, the, the quality of the sound, but also, also that, but also how you connect the notes, how you lead the phrase, where you take the breath, that's all very relevant elements in the in the singing melody, but actually as being a pianist and pushing the keys, or, uh, sometimes you just don't think about that. You don't think that, okay, here, actually the singer would take a breath or the phrase would go here because it's, and you, you have to take a little time before coming to the, to the um, top of the phrase. Sometimes you just don't think in these terms because actually it's all, easy, right? You just press, 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 and that's it. But it's not. So, and of course, Chopin being a poet of piano and also a singer of piano, for me, it's um, very relevant that you are aware, at least, about this, this, these um, qualities. And uh, it makes a big difference, I think, in the performance as well, when you, yeah, when you literally sing inside of you, or sometimes even loud when you practice, I mean, that you sing it out. And then you know exactly, okay, this works like this, this works like that, and not just yeah, mechanically yeah, playing piano. <laughs> well, I call it for myself a time machine because uh, playing on period piano gives me a possibility to go back to the sound which Chopin had in his mind when he lived and when he composed him. So he didn't know the modern Steinway sound or whatever, modern piano sound. He knew a completely different uh, instrument which um, had much mm, smaller sound comparing to the, to the modern pianos. But for that, um, because the strings were all straight, it had different also, this, that's why that they had different colors, different over, o overtones. And so it changes a lot, actually, in, in phrasing, and changes a lot in tempo, in use, usage of pedal as well, because sometimes Chopin writes this, those very long pedals where the harmonies are being mixed, and you ask yourself, hmm, why? But because the overtone mixture on the period piano is very different, it makes so much sense. And it's a great, it's, of course, it's a great inspiration, you know, to to have a reference what, what actually the effect was, what he was thinking about when you played on a period piano, you hear that. And you can um, use it also on a modern piano then, because you know what kind of sound you, you want to achieve. And uh, of course, the articulation is very different. 
and the phrasing, everything, also rubato indeed, because it's, uh, the, yeah, it's all a little bit different. But for me, it's a great enrichment because then you can really learn so much more also about the possibilities of uh, phrasing and everything, articulation, and you can apply it on the modern piano as well. So it's, it's not that I try to imitate the period piano on a modern piano, because that for me doesn't make so much sense. And you, I just, I just, rather sit on a period piano and play it. And because modern instruments still have, in my opinion, much, of course, much more possibilities. And then when you add this knowledge which you have from the period instruments, it gets even, even, even nicer. <laughs> Well, I think one key is not only to get stuck on practicing and, you know, only playing piano. I think it's, for me, it was very inspiring and helpful to, you know, to somehow to have a chance to dive into the world where, I mean, of course, very subjective, but to, to get into the world where Chopin lived. So it means also reading the books from his time, also of his many, many uh, writers, great writers he knew personally. So it means that it all gives us some more impulses about his music as well. Of course, also some painters, great painters, uh, were also his uh, friends and uh, he know them all. And also, of course, fellow musicians, uh, like Liszt, for instance, or many, many others. And um, I think it helps a lot because then it's, you feel more, you're not just stuck on playing, playing music, you feel it in a way, and you feel it, you have a, your vision of Chopin's music, you find his language. I mean, you find your language and his language, so that's the right term, yes. And another thing is, I think that another key is not to, not to think about the competition as a competition, especially my feeling here that the uh, Chopin competition was that it was a celebration of music, it was a celebration of Chopin, of his, birthday, birth year, and um, this inspiration was every, everywhere. The music was played on the streets, and that was for me very helpful because I didn't think in terms of I have to win or something. That was absolutely not what I had in my mind. And of course, also working the, on the stage uh, in the Philharmonic Hall, it's, it felt like it was always full. There were many people in every round, and it felt more like a festival, like, like a celebration of his genius and not, you know, like a stress, of course stress, but dif different types. So I think the relaxed that you are on your, the constant, the, the, if, you are con if you concentrate yourself on the music, on the message which you have in the music, I think that's the key. Not to think about the competition in terms of, yeah, who is better, who is worse. It's not about that. It's about sharing the Chopin's music around the world. And this is the, one of the most wonderful things which can happen. No, I don't remember that. I, I, as I said, I was uh, very moved that it was full and I didn't, you know, I, th I thought, and I, I know that, and then later, of course, as I met oh, Mar Marta personally, also the jury members are human beings, so it means that they like some something and they don't like something. So it means that actually we don't, I mean, being a, uh, working on that stage, I don't think that um, the competitors should divide between the jury members and the audience, you play also for the jury and the, at the moment when you play for them, they are also an audience member, not, not more and not less than that. So they're equal between all other people who are sitting in the hall. And um, I think that most of the musicians are very kind to their colleagues. It doesn't matter if they're younger, older or whatever, that's, that's, um, because 
the exactly you're talking about maybe Marta Argy, she knows exactly how it feels like to walk on that stage. So in my case, that was Bella Davidovich and many other, I mean, uh, Adam Horasevich, they, they knew all exactly uh, Dan Tyson, Food Song, they all went this, this way, <laughs> these steps up and then the, the way to the piano. So I think we don't, you don't have to be scared, scared by them. In, in the contrary, they know really. If someone knows, then they do. Uh, indeed, it takes a certain time until you really... I would put it another way. The, when, I, when I knew that I'm going to play here in Warsaw, in the Philharmonic Hall, maybe I was a little bit more excited than before in front of other places, because some, somehow, of course, I, uh, the ex expectations which I thought the people would have and, of course, just that so many people heard me here already. Yes, it made, made a kind of different level of excitement. But with the, with the time, it just it goes away. And now for me, it's a really a great joy to every time to come here. It feels like in a way indeed coming home and saying, saying hello to so many people who heard me many years ago and who were there during the entire path by now. And this is something very for me, very important, and I'm very, yeah, it's always very moving to come back here. I think that indeed, as I, as I mentioned, that the role of the musicians is prob for me more to speak with the language of music and less with the language of words. I think that music has this unique quality because it's, let's say, it's available for everyone who is open, who wants to hear it. And at the moment, when we all share the music, people in the, it doesn't matter if it's uh, at home with the, with the speakers or, or in the hall, it brings us closer together. Because we share this moment at the moment when we hear music, we, it reminds us on our ideals, it reminds us on who we are and why we're here. It reminds us that we're human beings and that we support each other and I think this is the strongest, actually strongest for me personally, quality of, of music. So that's why I think that um, yes, in, in, in speaking or sharing this language, we come really closer together, it unites us. And this is what I I'm so grateful to also experience also in this year that so many people stand together for peace. And I wish that the music also helps us to keep going with this, with this wish, with this message. <laughs>